Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here and sporting a fresh new look, freshly shaven, almost bald. But this week we're going to be talking a bit about maintenance. So I'm going to be doing my half yearly service on my Marin Alpine Trail 7. So we're going to go through everything I do in that service and then also some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Okay, so it's been pretty muddy here in Sydney the past few weeks and she's definitely overdue for a clean. I don't usually recommend cleaning bikes like this too often. If it's muddy like this, then definitely give it a clean. But if it's just a dry, dusty ride, what I recommend is just wiping it down with a microfiber towel or something like that, getting away from the suspension, all the pivot bolts and stuff like that. I feel like if you're washing it all the time, you're just going to be driving sand and grit into those points. And there are seals there and the seal bearings, but I feel like personally, you just drive more in there than you probably should and it's probably causing more harm than good. So yeah, if it's a muddy ride like this, definitely wash it. Probably best washing it straight after the ride so it's easy to get stuff off, but I was a little bit lazy, but yeah. But if it's money like this, give it a clean. But if it's just a normal ride, just give it a wipe down. But let's get this one clean. So personally, I like using Crush Stuff as it's a local brand, so it's good to spot local and it does everything pretty damn well. Firstly, I'll wash down the bike using just the shower setting and then I'll spray on the rapid wash foam to loosen everything up, let it sit for a couple of minutes and then rinse it down. Then I'll spray on the drivetrain cleaner. It's good to do your drivetrain first. Don't want to get everything else dirty, so start with your drivetrain and then I'll let that set for a couple of minutes as well. Then I'll grab a regular scrubbing brush and go to town on the cassette, chain rings and jockey wheel, and then I'll grab a chain cleaner and clean the chain. Next up, I'll use the premium bike wash in a bucket and clean the rest of the bike with a soft bristle brush that's in the crush kit. And then I'll use a sponge for the suspension, so use something a bit different for the suspension. Don't want any kind of grit or anything getting onto the suspension. Then I'll dry the bike and the chain thoroughly, and then I'll add on some chain lube. Personally, I really like squirt lube. I think it's the best, but this will do for today. Okay, so now the bike's all clean, it's time to jump into everything else. So I've written a bit of a list down here of everything I do in my six month service. So at six months, I check the tires and then also replace them if I need to do that. I change my chain, then also tune the drivetrain. If I need to replace my inner cable, I'll do that as well. I'll also check my brake pads. If they don't need to be changed, then I'll give them the sand down, also sand down the rotors and then give them a good clean with some brake cleaner. I use the Crush Rotor Revive, but I'll go into that a bit later. I also check all the bearings and the linkage, just make sure they're all running smoothly and give them a bit of a clean as well. And then I'll also torque all those bolts down to spec as well, just to make sure they don't come loose. And then I might put some blue Loctite on those if they're coming loose a bit as well. I'll also check the bottom bracket and the headset, so give both those a clean and then add some grease in there as well. So take the cranks off and give that a good clean as well as the fork and get that headset nice and clean, make sure it's all running smoothly. And then also service suspension. So I'll get a lower service down the forks and then also an air can service on the shock as well. So kind of that six month service in between a big service on the suspension. And then I'll also check all the bolts, make sure they're all talked up, check the dropper posts as well, check that cable and then also grease the top part of it in there. So pull that apart a bit and put a bit of grease in there, make sure it's all clean. But other than that, it's just servicing everything and making sure it's all running properly between kind of a big pull apart, rebuild kind of stuff that I do once a year. So enough of that stuff, let's get into it and let's start with the tires. So I recently got Tannis tire armor. So that prompted me to get some new tires. Well, I also destroyed my rear tire. So I have a Maxxis dissector for the rear, which I haven't tried before. So a review coming soon for that. And then I have the trusty Asagai up front, which I've already reviewed and the link in the description for that as well. They are both in the EXO casing with the 3C Max Terra compound. So normally I run a double down, but the Tannis should help with that. So it's good that I can offset a little bit of weight by using a lighter casing with the Tannis. It's definitely good to ditch the messy sealant and put on some fresh rubber. I think this will be a good setup for reviews as I don't need to worry about tubeless setup all the time. I can just put in the Tannis in a tube. So the Tannis goes on super easy compared to any other inset that I've tried. It's just as simple as adding a slightly smaller tube with a tire. So for my tires, they're 2.5, 2.4. I just put in a 1.75 to 2 inch tube for my setup. And the setup for the front was just as easy as the rear, so not to bore you too much with clips of a guy putting on tires. Here's just a, here's a few more just to show that I did it. So that was actually pretty easy to set up. It was a bit hard to get the last bit of the tire over the bead, but overall it was a pretty good experience and definitely a fair bit easier than tubeless. No sealing everywhere, no mess. It was actually pretty good. So I'll run the Tannis for a couple of months and I'll get back with a review of the Tannis as well as the Dissector as well. So yeah, expect that in a couple of months time. So let's take a quick moment to appreciate how well that Asagai is worn. I think it's around eight months old and it's the max grip version as well. So you'd expect it to wear out pretty quickly, but the wear's been really good on the that tire. So I've been really impressed with it. Considering the grip that you get, definitely a big plus for me. 
And then also the sealant as well. I know we're getting away from sealant, but that orange seal stuff lasts forever. So if you're looking for a good sealant for tubeless, I definitely recommend the orange seal. It lasts for a while. And then you can see inside, it's got good coverage too. So yeah, definitely check out orange seal if you're looking for a sealant. So now I've got the wheels off, it's definitely a good time to check those brake pads. So I'll check the brake pads, clean the rotors and do a few other things as well. So you'll probably know if your brakes need a bleed, but my levers felt pretty firm, so I'm gonna leave that. But I'll usually do a brake fluid flush at one year, even if they don't need a bleed, just to keep the fluid fresh. So now to check the pads, they're a bit dirty, but there's a fair bit of meat left. So I'll give them a bit of a clean and a sand with some sandpaper and some crushed rotor revive. So this stuff's pretty amazing. So what I'll usually do is I'll spray a bit on the brake pads and a bit on the sandpaper, and then just sand the pads back until they look clean. I do like to use gloves when I'm doing stuff with my brakes. It just prevents contamination and also brake clean is not that good for your skin as well. So it's always good to wear some gloves. Then I do the same for the rotors, give the rotors a bit of a spray and then also on the sandpaper and give them a bit of a sand and this should get rid of any contamination that you have. So those pads and rotors are nice and clean now. Keep in mind, they might squeal for a little bit. That's normal, you pretty much just need to bed them in again. So do your normal bedding procedure and they'll be running like new. Okay, so now for the rest of it, I'll change the chain on the drivetrain, also tune up the drivetrain as well. I'll probably pull the cranks off and grease the bottom bracket as well, just make sure everything's running smoothly. And then I'll check all the pivot bolts as well. I'll probably take them out and then clean the bearings a little bit as well and then put them back and then torque them up to what the recommended torques are on there as well and then I'll remove my suspension and fork and then we're gonna get those serviced as well. So first up, I remove my chain. I usually change my chain every six months. This way I usually get around two chains to my cassette. A worn chain is always gonna wear out a cassette a bit quicker, so if you can do it a bit earlier, it's always better. Using my trusty quick link pliers, it makes removing a chain with a quick link a breeze. Then I measure up my old chain against the new one and use a chain breaker to take off a few links. Then it's as simple as running the chain back through the derailleur and putting the chain back together with the quick link. Now onto adjusting the drivetrain. Firstly, I wind in the micro adjuster on the shifter fully clockwise, and then I tighten the cable at the derailleur. Luckily for me, I got it first try and the shifting is pretty damn dialed if I don't say myself, which is great because I'm usually terrible at this. Next up, I went to take the cranks out, but unfortunately I didn't have the tools, so we're gonna have to do this a bit later. Now it's time to move on to the bearings. First off, I remove the shock as we need to get this serviced anyway, but there's also two bearings at the top of the trunnion mount. Luckily, these were all good. Then I turned my attention to the rest of the bearings. I gave them a bit of a clean and then torqued them all back up using a torque wrench. Then all that was left was to remove the front brake from the fork, undo the stem and top cap, and then drop the fork out to be serviced as well. Okay, so I'm at pretty much a stalemate with the bike now. There's not much more I can do myself. I don't want to push my luck. I'm definitely not the best at this kind of stuff like that. I need to do a lot more of it, but yeah, I kind of can't do much more and I don't have some of the tools. So suspension's off. So now let's go and get that serviced. All right, so I've enlisted the help of Cisco from Bikes and Shocks to service my suspension. One of the things with servicing suspension, normally you'd have to drive somewhere or I usually have to send it up to Queensland or something like that. So it's super handy to have someone come to you and service it. So I guess, tell us a bit about Bikes and Shocks and why you started it. Um, so Bikes and Shocks started like, um a dream that I had for so many years. Um, be, I was thinking about that for maybe nine or ten years. Uh, but yeah, I have to saw out all my yeah. um, visa and all of that things. Yeah. Uh, but they finally we sorted out. Uh, we got the van. All all of the sudden, just uh, a friend called me. Like he knew I was doing all the van yeah. fitting. And he just called me like, I mean, I need my bike service. I prefer you to do it. So yeah. I went to his place and he was like, you, can I take some pictures and put it on Facebook? Yeah. I was like, yeah, just do it. And he posted and since then it's been crazy. So it's been going Yeah, well. couldn't have picked a better time to start yeah, a bike. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Everything's been going crazy. Yeah. So I guess like one of the things, everyone's kind of obsessed with van builds and stuff like that at the yeah. moment. It's kind of like the big thing. Did you do it all yourself or did you get a hand with a bit of uh, it? No. My dad did it, okay, so awesome. he came all the way from Colombia. He stayed with me for three months. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I was. He came and was like, "What do you want?" And I told him, "I want this, this, and this." Yeah. And I went for work, and when I come back, everything was done. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sounds was, like a dream. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> and yeah, everything worked out the way the way I wanted to set it up, and yeah. a few little adjustments. But yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's a pretty dial built. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. All right, so I've got my suspension here, so I got my shock as well as my fork, and I've been riding for probably around 50 to 60 hours. So what do you usually recommend for most people after that kind of time of riding? <coughs> well, bef 
before we start, I recommend to put um, like a mud guard. Yeah. Uh, mud guard is always good because it protects the seals yep. and it's less chances that you get mud and sand in, in around the seals. Yeah. So if you're thinking about a mud guard, maybe get one that uh, cover around the seals yep. and the stanchions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, servicing maybe. They recommend every 50 to 80 hours yep. to do the lower seals and mm -hmm. the lower oil um, and the air pistons. Yep. Uh, that's what I do with the 50 or 80 hour service. Yep. And then is the 150 or 200 hour service, yep. which is uh, we open the cartridge, we basically strip the full fork, yep. uh, we rebuild it, put everything back together. Mm -hmm. uh, we set all the dials and all yep. of that to the riders references yeah yeah awesome yeah well i'll leave you to it you're the professional you no. know what you're doing <laughs> and we'll come and have a bit of a chat later okay Okay, so now that's all done, I'm keen to get that back on the bike. It's going to be nice and slick and super smooth when I'm back on the trails. Um, but I guess, what's your kind of top three tips maintenance-wise for people to kind of ensure their bike's running smoothly or just prevent anything bad from happening to the bike? Well, the best thing is, like I say, with a fork and uh, put a mud guard. Yep. Uh, always um, don't wash it. Don't put too much water with yep. like pressure. I know some people go for a ride it's a mud day yep. and they get home and put a water with the time, hose yeah, yeah. Um, it's not that good mm -hmm. um, yeah replace the seals every 50 or 80 hours yeah uh, so you have more life of your yeah. of your suspensions less chances to ruin it um, same with the brakes mm -hmm. uh, bleed the brakes very often yeah so take the burnt oil out mm -hmm. put a new one and fresh yeah uh, so you improve the the power of the braking and yep. all of that sort of stuff and clean your drivetrain. Yeah. Try not to do it with water. <laughs> <laughs> just like a rug or... Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's just keep as much water off it as you can because it's just yeah. going to drive Yeah, yeah even though it. you have steel bearings, they're yeah. not waterproof. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, sweet. And I guess what kind of, other than suspension, what other service do you kind of offer? And then in terms of like the mobile mechanic stuff, like what can you do for people kind of like sets you apart? Um, so the idea of the mobile mechanic is to go to people's houses or work or even to the favorite trials yeah uh, do this the bike the suspensions the pivot points mm -hmm. um, anything basically your bike needs yeah uh, build wheels mm -hmm. everything yeah. Um, yeah so we i think what set it apart is yeah that like we yeah. can go to yeah. people's houses and yeah. so they don't have to go out yeah especially these days as you can yeah, kind of um, much, yeah, yeah, contact free and yeah, 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 awesome. And where can people find you if they're looking for socials or if they want to book something? Where can they find? Um, you? So you can check our website is triple triple w yeah. <laughs> www dot yes dot yeah. <laughs> uh, bikes and shocks yep. dot com. Oh yeah, awesome. And then on socials like just bikes and shocks on Instagram. Yeah, bikes and, and shock on Instagram and Facebook. Too easy. And thanks very much for helping me out with Thank everything. Thank you for coming to us. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> so the bike's finally put back together. Bit of a process, but it's all good now. Thanks to Cisco at Bikes and Shocks again. Absolutely awesome guy and awesome company. So pretty stoked with the suspension. Keen to get it back on the trail and see how it feels. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with any of the products that I use in this kind of servicing stuff. It's just stuff that I've used and I've enjoyed over the years. So that wraps everything up. I've got something absolutely awesome planned for you guys next week. Something that's really, really cool and you're gonna enjoy it, so definitely tune in. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. Also leave a comment, how do you service your bike? And if you have any questions, definitely leave them below and subscribe to the channel. It's always welcome to have more subscribers, it's always awesome. But with all that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. See ya.